Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Well, trash littering area roadways has long been an issue that has stoked anger among residents. While the county is responsible for Prince George's roadways, some lawmakers are concerned that Maryland is neglecting its duties on state roads. Why is it that our roads are looking uh, a lot more trashier than other communities? Why is it that their grass isn't overgrown, but our grass is? Delegate Nick Charles says he was having trouble getting a direct answer from Maryland's Department of Transportation about trash and maintenance along state roads. So he sponsored a bill last year to address the issue. The measure never made it out of committee, but it did spark a conversation with MDOT officials. We've noticed in Prince George's County is that when we look at our roads, there are, there's a big difference in the discrepancy between how our roads are maintained in comparison to some of the surrounding jurisdictions. Now, Charles says that the measure forced MDOT to develop a schedule and to determine what a clean road should look like, including the height of the grass. It also required a breakdown of how funds are distributed among district offices. Since that time, Charles has met with MDOT monthly to address concerns. One of the things he recently learned is that Prince George's has many more miles of state roads than neighboring jurisdictions. Prince George's County's Upper Marlboro shop has the majority of the lane miles, and we are being funded at a lower amount for all of these lane miles. And Delegate Charles says that the number of highway miles should determine how district offices are funded. When you look at the total difference and how that's broken out, there's a $300,000 difference, which is equivalent to multiple contracts to pay for these roads to get cleaned up uh, and the grass to get cut. They're getting $300,000 more in Montgomery County's Fairland shop versus the Upper Marlboro shop. Now, Delegate Charles says he would like to have a regular schedule of cleanups and highway maintenance for residents, but he says a funding disparity has made the lawmaker question equity issues, in particular racial equity. Tomorrow we'll have much more on that part of the story. Well, a gun is found on a student at Duval High School in Lanham this morning. The 15-year-old student is facing several charges, including possession of a firearm by a minor and possession of a dangerous weapon on school property. The weapon was recovered during a search of the student by school security personnel. The bill is called More Local Tax Relief for Working Families Act of 2023. Lawmakers in Annapolis are debating this legislation. It would, as the name implies, cut local taxes for most Marylanders. The measure was introduced in the Senate by Jim Rosepep. He says it would allow taxes to go up for people making more than $500,000 a year to fund the tax cuts for everyone else. What it basically says is that by making the tax system fair, making the rich pay a little bit more, we can cut taxes for everybody else. Very in line with uh, President Biden's state of the state last night mm -hmm. in terms of making sure that the wealthy and big corporations pay their fair share. This bill gives Prince George County the ability to cut taxes, income taxes for working families. Uh, there's going to be a lot of support from county executives uh, from across the state. Uh, there's going to be support from the uh, Association of Counties, because this gives counties the ability to make the county income tax more progressive. Doesn't change the state income tax, doesn't change the federal income tax, but allows the counties to make the county income tax more progressive. And the measure is currently before the Budget and Taxation Committee. If passed, it goes into effect on June 30th. Well, the brutal beating and subsequent death of a Memphis man has led some Prince George's lawmakers to call for more oversight on police special enforcement units in the county. Five members of a special enforcement unit in Memphis called Scorpion are charged with the murder of Tyree Nichols. That unit has since been disbanded. The issue spurred Councilmember Edward Burroughs, who sits on the committee overseeing police, into action. He says lawmakers need information on how those units operate in the county. Based off of what occurred in Memphis, it's so important that they look at our specialty units to ensure that they have the proper accountability and oversight. I hope they will look at, the, look at each of the use of force complaints per each um, unit uh, and really call them in to figure out, well, just to make sure that, there's, um, that they're operating in a way with integrity and respect to the residents. And Burroughs says he has asked the Police Accountability Board to look at the special enforcement units to ensure proper accountability and oversight. 
Well, President Biden celebrated his party's legislative accomplishments while pledging to find common ground with Republicans in his second State of the Union address. Biden drew applause from his fellow Democrats and heckles from Republicans. Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene called Biden a liar, a similar accusation leveled at former President Barack Obama during his first State of the Union. Meantime, Biden highlighted the nation's economic progress the last two years. Two years ago, the economy was reeling. I stand here tonight after we've created, with the help of many people in this room, 12 million new jobs. More jobs created in two years than any president's created in four years because of you all, because of the American people. And Maryland Governor Wes Moore and Prince George's County Executive Angela Osobrooks attended last night's State of the Union. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Ballone. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. Well, Prince George's school officials say the district has seen a spike in fentanyl-related overdoses. As we reported yesterday, the school system hosted a community meeting at High Point High School last night to talk about the growing issue. County police have confirmed that there have been 28 investigations into overdoses involving juveniles since the start of the school year. Police say all of these incidents were reported on school grounds. School officials say the county health department provides Narcan kits to the district. Those kits were given out to attendees at yesterday's meeting. Two teenagers have been nabbed in connection with the recent car theft. Here are the suspects, 19-year-old Tyree Pearson of Washington, D.C., and 18-year-old Kevin Hawkins of Capitol Heights. This is the Kia that investigators say they stole using a USB cord to start the car. The two were spotted in the car yesterday in the 1400 block of Opus Avenue in Capitol Heights and were taken into custody. They faced several charges, including the unlawful taking of a motor vehicle. The Maryland Health Department today reports 626 new COVID-19 cases. The positivity rate has fallen slightly to 9.45%. Eight Marylanders have succumbed to the virus over the last 24 hours, and 501 people are currently hospitalized with COVID. Maryland realtors say the state has an inadequate supply of housing, and they're calling on lawmakers to do something about it. During a press conference today, the group announced its 2023 State of Maryland Housing Report. The findings indicate that Maryland is in need of 120,000 housing units. Officials say the shortage is impacting moderate income residents who make too much to qualify for subsidized housing. Another problem is that many residents still can't afford the homes that are currently on the market. So if you have a person making a six-figure income, and they are approved for, let's say, 300000 they don't know there's nothing for them to buy. You know, so that's one of the reasons why we introduced the whole accessory dwelling units, which is called ADUs. And on the state level, giving um, the opportunity for people who, for example, let's say they want to have a garage apartment or, you know, a second level put onto a garage. And Maryland Realtors are also pushing lawmakers to pass the Housing Innovation Pilot Program Act of 2023. A hearing on this measure is set for February 14th. Well, we'll have more news and sports after the break. Stay with us. Hey, Simon Brooks here. And coming up soon, a member of the UMD women's lacrosse team talks about how her team can improve in 2023 and an NBA legend makes history. Don't go anywhere. Climate change vulnerable neighborhoods, threatened ecosystems. Our challenges demand we do better, and a tree can be an answer. Because a tree can be innovative, it can be unifying, it can be 
a home. Now is the time for trees. Let's plant millions of trees together. Thanks for staying with us. Well, do you need a getaway without going too far away? Then this black owned business may be just for you. Take a look at Wellspring Manor and Spa here in Prince George's County. This is a place where you can unplug from your everyday life and plug into a world of peace, community and black culture. Wellspring Manor and Spa is not a hotel. It's a, a destination where guests can connect with themselves and with others in an intimate, elevated way. When you walk into the Ritz-Carlton, as wonderful as their service is, you may never have another conversation with another guest. We have one of the largest private art collections of black art in the region. We're very proud of that. Uh, the art is an integral part of the Wellspring experience. And you can find out more on the website. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we take an up-close tour inside Wellspring Manor and Spa. women's lacrosse team was getting ready for a season opener on Saturday. Even though the squad went 19-2 last year, they're still looking for improvement in 2023. Attacker Libby May believes if the team can trust the process, then they can have a successful season. Something that we always try to emphasize is just trusting the process. So you look at last year, um, we started out really strong and in the middle of the season we had um, a loss to JMU who is such a great program. They're so dominant, um, but that, I think that kind of kicked us into high gear and we just had to know that although we're going to have ups and downs, we have to just trust, um, trust the process and know that if we focus on the little things and work super hard every day at practice and just try to play Maryland lacrosse and work for each other, that the outcome will take care of itself. So obviously it's not going to be perfect. We don't expect that. Um, but just knowing that if we focus on all the little things that um, we'll see the success that we want. The Lady Terps take on St. Joseph's at 1 o'clock. Now for some NBA news. History was made last night as Lakers forward LeBron James became the NBA's all-time leading scorer. The scoring record was previously held by center Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and was set in 1984. James broke the record by hitting a fadeaway shot over Oklahoma City guard Ken Rich Williams. While James accomplished such an NBA history-making feat, he says that breaking the record wasn't a goal for him. This was not a goal for me. That's why it's probably so surreal and, and, and so just like weird to me because I never ever talked about being an all-time scorer in NBA history. I've, it's never even been a thought of mine until I just, I guess I start seeing my, my numbers get closer and closer. I was like, oh wow, this is, this is kind of crazy. This is like, it's weird, but it's, I can, I guess I can do it because I'm gonna be playing and I know I'm still playing at a high level, so it's, it, can, it can happen. James will have an opportunity to add more points to his total as he and the Lakers take on the Milwaukee Bucks tomorrow night. And finally, the Bowie State men and women's basketball team will be in action tomorrow as they both go up against Elizabeth City State University. The women will be playing at 5.30, followed by the men at 7.30. Simon Bugs, CTV Sports. Thanks, Simon. And now we're going to check on your weather forecast. Tonight, mostly clear with a slight chance of showers, lows near 38. There's rain in the forecast tomorrow through Saturday. Expect highs around 65 on Thursday. High temperatures will range from 47 to 59 on Friday and Saturday. Low temps will range in the low 30s. That is your CTV News Update. I'm Patricia Vallone. Have a great night.